mega crane in a wind farm. Huge chains, a gigantic boom, and incredibly heavy loads. The construction of the crane is deceptively hard work. It's like Lego, super big Lego. The individual steel elements are huge, but despite that, it comes down to millimeters. He just said the tolerance is 0.3 degrees. Mega cranes are used in the remotest places in the world. And they set spectacular records. There's no need to be afraid, but you need to show respect. Mistakes can have dramatic consequences. The construction of this steel colossus is a challenge. The engineers push the limits of physics. You can't cheat the laws of physics. Either the whole lot falls over or part of the boom breaks off. Crane operators are tough types, but with finely honed instincts. Here, nothing works without teamwork. The little one helps the big one, just like in life. <laughs> this is a premiere for the crane operators. They'll be assembling this brand new mega crane for the first time. The most critical moment for us is raising the crane. That's where you think about it. Man, have we done everything just right? Crank the front end, tighten it, order a break. Everyone is tense. Will the assembly run smoothly? When it's up there and falls down, then you've got a hole in your head. We have to give everything today. Cranes as far as the eye can see. This forest of cranes is located in Eingen in Baden-Württemberg. Liebherr has some of the largest cranes in the world. The company premises cover an area of 850,000 square meters. That's more than 100 football pitches. The company is the world market leader in crane construction. Liebherr cranes are used all over the world, in ports, at industrial plants, in open cast mining, in inner cities. Or in the construction of wind turbines. Here a 750 ton crane assembles the rotor blades of a wind turbine in East Friesland. The company Knack from Hamburg bought the crane from Liebherr. The LR 1750-2. It's their newest flagship and has some innovations compared to its predecessor. Even long-standing crane operators need extensive instruction before using this type of crane. And there they both are. Karsten Heinze and Christian Henkert. They're going to be training on this steel colossus. Hello, I'm Benny Lock. Hi there, I'm Benny Lock. You'll be working on the new LR1750 with the new SX boom system. The crane has come direct from the factory. That's why it's still gray and unpainted. Over the next two weeks, the two crane operators will get to know their new equipment and its functions. They'll check out every screw and every bolt. They'll put the crane through its paces. And they'll assemble it completely for the first time. They'll be helped by Benjamin Locke. He works for the manufacturer. When we're up top later, we'll have to put a load on it. The LR1750-2. This model is a so-called crawler crane, one of the biggest. It can lift up to 750 tons. In the largest version, it's almost 200 meters high up to the top of the boom. 
Its own weight is gigantic. All of the individual parts together weigh around 800 tons. One single link in the caterpillar chain alone weighs almost 400 kilos. Anyone who wants to set up and operate a crane like this needs immense expertise and years of experience. It can never become routine. Carelessness can have dramatic consequences. Caterpillar cranes are far too big for smaller applications. On construction sites in narrow residential areas, so-called mobile cranes usually lift the loads. They normally have the substructure of a conventional truck. The crane is then permanently mounted on the substructure. The advantage is that the crane can be transported quickly from A to B, and it can be set up and dismantled in a relatively short time. However, it can usually lift significantly less weight than the large crawler cranes. Berlin Kreuzberg. Here, a so-called weather protection roof needs to be removed. Craftsmen have been working for several months on the roof truss of this five-story house. The weather roof has protected them from wind and rain. Christian Müller is head of the Berlin crane rental company Müller and Sohn. The family-owned company rents mobile cranes mainly in Berlin and Brandenburg. Before any crane is erected, Christian Müller inspects the site carefully. The most important question is always whether there is enough space for the crane. Now I use the laser to measure the width of the road from the edge of the parking spaces to the curb. And now I'm measuring the parking spaces too. On site, Christian Müller produces a first rough drawing with all the dimensions. Of course, you can do it right down to the centimeter if you have an exact point. Otherwise, you have an approximate value. So it doesn't come down to the centimeter. We need things by the meter. The crane operator is confident. The road is wide enough. So that's 17 meters. Christian Müller enters further details in the drawing, such as trees and street lamps. This is important for the approval from the road traffic authority. These kinds of approval procedures can sometimes drag on in Berlin. Approval lead time in Kreuzberg is about 8 to 10 weeks. Not exactly fast, but a pretty good lead time. After visiting the construction site, the planning continues in the office. Christian Müller uses special software for this. Here he enters all the values he noted down. We've got a load of two tons, which is what the weather roof is supposed to weigh. We have a projection of 24 meters, that is, 11 meters to the side of the interfering edge, and 13 meters diagonal to support the weather roof, and then we can simulate this load. All the company's cranes are stored in the system. Based on the entered data, the program suggests suitable cranes. Christian Müller assigns his crane operator, Edin Kierkelich, known as Eddie, to this job. He operates a 100-ton crane made by Tadano, and he's been using it for several years. Basically, the cranes are shared out. Each operator has assigned his own crane. That's his personal environment that he's got there, like his apartment, sort of. They set it all up so they have everything they might need, where they can put their lunchbox. That's their living room. In a few weeks, it will be Eddie Kierkelich's job to lift the weather roof off the roof truss and lower it down to the road. Then it will become clear whether Christian Müller's planning was correct. Back in the Swabian town of Eingen, the family-owned company Liebherr has been developing and building the largest and most powerful cranes in the world since 1949. They are repeatedly used for the most spectacular jobs. Often the special constructions have to move heavy loads in the tightest of spaces.
and the crane manufacturer is constantly setting new records. The highlight of any leap hair event? The crane mobile. The larger crane lifts the smaller one, and so on. In the end, three large cranes and a small model crane hang on the hook of a single giant crane. The two crane drivers, Carsten Heinze and Christian Henkert, have no plans for such an action right now. They are here to help build a wind farm in East Friesland. This is where the new crawler crane LR1750-2 is being used. Actually, it's almost routine. But the huge crane is equipped with the latest technology. For this reason, the two crane operators will now receive a two-week training course from the manufacturer. It's like Lego, super big Lego. Lego is also lots of parts that are put together, and that's exactly the same here. Sounds simple, but it's also a challenge. After all, the men here are moving huge amounts of steel. The individual elements are brought by an auxiliary crane. They each weigh between 3 and 15 tons. To stop the auxiliary crane from tipping over while lifting, it stands on supports. Christian Henke connects the lattice mast components with heavy bolts. These are then secured with an oversized safety split pin. The openings are greased beforehand to ensure that the bolts slide in cleanly. Four months on the North Sea, you've got salt water here. You've got more salt in the air and in the rain. If you don't get things greased in time and you leave it together for a few months, then it's possible that rust will set in later. One bolt weighs about 15 kilos. You can hardly knock it out, even with a hammer. That's why the men on a wagon carry a hydraulic bolt extractor. We use it to bolt and unbolt the bolts. It's a huge help. You don't have to hit them with a hammer, but you do have to use it carefully. There's a lot of power behind it. Although everything basically works like oversized Lego, the men here are working with hard steel and not plastic bricks. But it is still precision work. If a part is not straight, that would be fatal. That is why everything is precisely controlled with a spirit level. It has to be exactly straight because the part we're attaching hangs right after it. And if the other one's at an angle, they won't fit together. He just said the tolerance is 0.3 degrees. The crane is growing one piece at a time. Almost a whole day passes until it reaches its final length. Cranes like this one are available in different configurations. Different heights are possible depending on the requirements on site. This crane now has a boom length of 177 meters. The auxiliary crane brings the last heavy part. The end piece weighs two and a half tons. Christian Henke knocks the bolts into the openings with a hammer. Later, the heavy steel cable from which the crane hook hangs runs over these rollers. The rollers are made of Teflon. The benefit is that it's very light and doesn't break easily. That means if there are stones in there, it rolls on a little bit, and then it just works its way in a little and doesn't break. If it was a metal roller, it would be heavier and break more easily. Afterwards, the men pull a power cable through the whole construction. This will later be used to power several sensors, among other things. Now we lay the electrics from the front of the feeder and pull the cable into the boom as far as the front of the head. 
So we can power the flashing lamp at the front. The flashing lamp flashes red later so that the crane can be seen from the air by airplanes and helicopters. Modern cranes are packed with electronics these days. Computers monitor the entire operation. Above all, they ensure that the crane is stable under all conditions. Here we have the heart of the crane. Without these cards, nothing works on the crane. They're inserted into the central units. That's where all the data are stored, with the complete configuration of the crane. We can use them later for upgrades, and you can't do anything without the cards. The hoisting rope is just as important. It alone weighs five tons. This is why an auxiliary crane is used to pull the rope over the entire construction to the crane tip. Of course, it wouldn't be possible to thread this into the rollers by hand. So the men hang it onto a forklift truck. This pulls the rope through the rollers. The rope is subjected to severe stresses during operation. Because of this, it needs to be regularly maintained and cared for with rope grease. The rope is self-lubricating from the inside, and if it starts to rust from the outside, then you have to apply it from the outside. We've got special rope grease for the outside, and that soaks right into the rope. Before erecting the crane, Christian Henkert and trainer Benjamin Locke inspect the crane one more time from end to end. You go right, I'll take the left. It's all the same to me. We're now checking the boom from the top, inspecting the entire boom again from the hinge joint to the headpiece. We need to see if all the rods lock, everything is tight, there are no loose parts anywhere, so that nothing can fall off when we erect the crane. This check is vital for the crane teams, because even a small part can become a deadly projectile when the crane is being raised upright. The men have done good work, everything's tight. After almost two days of preparation, they can finally erect the crane. Alex? Yeah. I'll let it run now, and then we'll pull the boom out. Okay. The most critical moment is raising the crane. That's where you think about it. Man, have we done everything just right? Equipment tester Benjamin Luck starts the crane. The system starts up, and very slowly, the huge boom moves upwards. Crank the front end, tighten it, or it'll break. But after a few meters, Benjamin Locke stops again. Carsten Heinz and Christian Henkert now feed the hoisting rope into the so-called pulley with the crane hook. Only now can Benjamin Locke finally erect the crane. Due to its gigantic weight, the boom bends as it is raised. Benjamin Locke uses these joysticks to control almost everything on the crane. Turning, lifting or lowering the load, all this is done with these two levers. Centimeter by centimeter, Benjamin Locke pulls the crane upwards. After half an hour, the job is done. and the crane is standing. That's one of those moments when you say, we've done it. Six a.m. in Berlin Spandau. The courtyard of the crane rental company Müller and Sohn is shrouded in swaths of fog. 
15 mobile cranes are stationed here. Crane operator Eddie Kirkulich prepares for the day's work. He has to lift down a so-called weather protection roof from a five-story residential building. Eddie will be using a 100-ton mobile crane made by Tadano. Before he starts, he checks everything thoroughly. Just a quick look around to see if the tire pressure is correct and everything else checks out okay. Then it's time to get going. He's got a good half hour's drive ahead of him. In his company, most drivers have their own crane assigned to them, which they always use. Eddie Kirkulich knows his crane inside out. I prefer driving the crane to my own car because you have a better overview in here. And the other drivers have more respect. When you turn left or right, there's always room. Dawn in Berlin. The city is slowly waking up. Eddie Kirkulich steers his mobile crane across the capital, along the street of the 17th of June, and past the victory column. He arrives in a residential area in Berlin-Kreuzberg. The road is narrow. Eddie Kirkulich has to maneuver the truck extremely carefully. The vehicle has steering axles. This reduces the turning circle. At the construction site, scaffolders are already waiting to dismantle the weather roof. Eddie Kirkulich doesn't waste any time and gets the crane ready for use. To do this, he first extends the supports. To spread the crane's weight over a larger area, he places wooden beams under the supports. The cobblestone pavement alone cannot support the crane. The load that will be hanging on the hook later on weighs about two and a half tons. So the crane requires appropriate counterweights. These have been delivered by Eddie's colleague, Holger Gericke. The building is roughly 26 meters high. To make sure the crane reaches all the way up to the top, the boom comes with an extension. The men have to mount this now. That's the tip of the boom, and we need to swing that out a bit. Then it'll be bolted at the front, and then we'll fold the whole thing out. Holger Gehrlicke pulls the boom tip into the correct position with a rope. Then the men assemble the pulley and thread in the steel cable. In addition, they also attach a so-called hoist limit weight to the boom tip. This is a safety device to prevent the crane's hook block from bumping against the boom if the crane operator pulls it up too far. If the crane operator can't see the end of the crane when it's above the roof, the block swings against it and activates this switch, and then the winch stops. Finally, Holger Gericke assembles the hook. Then Eddie Kirkulich raises the boom. It consists of a basic boom and five so-called telescopic parts. Each telescopic part is almost 10 meters long. The crane is now ready. The men are ready to lift down the weather protection roof now. From now on, everyone involved in the project needs maximum concentration. It is not an easy task, and we'll present the workers with some challenges later on. Cranes are masterpieces of engineering. Here, it's about exploring the limits of physics again and again. Liebherr from Baden-Württemberg builds the largest and most powerful cranes. 
Here they have huge halls with production lines, much like the automotive industry. The construction of a crane starts in a computer. Joachim Henkel is head of the statics department. Together with his team, he is constantly trying to realize extraordinary customer wishes. But there are limits. The Liebherr LR13000 crane is the largest still mobile lattice boom crane. The largest version of the boom is almost 250 meters long. I think that with a conventional lattice boom crane, they're about as good as they'll get. This is why Liebherr's engineers continue to improve existing cranes in order to raise the maximum load and reduce weak points, like here at the base of the lattice mast. Red here means a very high load. Everything coming from above must be transferred through this bottleneck to the undercarriage or the revolving platform. I always say you can't cheat physics. We are also responsible for staying within the physical limits and ensuring the safety of the crane during operation. Nevertheless, serious crane accidents do happen, such as here in Italy. In this situation, there seems to be too much on the hook. The crane starts to shake and finally loses control. It tilts forward and ends in disaster. The cause of such accidents is usually not the technology, but human error. A crane like this can fail in two ways. Either the whole lot falls over, or a part of the boom breaks off. We try to avoid that. The production halls. The crane manufacturer stores thousands of tons of steel. They are huge quantities of pipes and plates. These are later used to build all kinds of different cranes. Even a single steel plate can weigh up to 11 tons. Powerful magnetic cranes move along the ceiling of the hall. The magnets lift the plates up and bring them into the production halls. Here, a robot cuts individual components out of the plates with millimeter precision. These will be used later to make the driver's cab or the heavy caterpillar track chains, for example. Plans are drawn up with the individual parts, depending on the size of the sheet metal. They are sent here electronically, and the corresponding number is entered into the machine. Then the image appears on the screen, and the cut takes place automatically. The workers are really only here to load the machines and to clean up the parts. The workers punch out the pieces as if it were cookie dough. Nothing is thrown away here. The waste is melted down again later in the blast furnace. In the hall next door, workers build the lattice mast elements for the crawler cranes. The pipes from the steel warehouse are welded together here. It's a really tough job because it causes extreme heat and UV radiation. So the men need additional protection from sunscreen. We use 50 plus sunscreen. In other words, locksmiths and welders have to put cream on their faces so that every employee is protected. Depending on the size, the production of a single element takes up to six months. This is the tip of an LR13000. The world's most powerful crawler crane can lift up to 3,000 tons. Production supervisor Drago Teisler checks the welds. After welding, the parts must rest for a while. Afterwards, magnets and ultrasound are used to check whether the welders have done their job properly. The huge crane parts have to be controlled precisely later on. For this purpose, the cranes are equipped with highly sensitive electronics. Cable harnesses, fuses, and switch cabinets are assembled in this area. This is where a sure hand counts. 
We need very delicate fingers to work with these small parts. And in the steel mill, you need a very large grinding machine or welding machine. The components are all much bigger. One of the largest parts of a crawler crane is the caterpillar track. The workers mount this using a crane. Afterwards, it is then pre-stressed with 60 tons of force. A forklift truck supports the track from below so that it does not slip down again. It looks easy, but a single chain link weighs about 400 kilos. The entire chain, about 28 tons. This track is not yet exactly lined up. An iron bar is therefore used to help. Only then does the chain link fall into the right position with a loud bang. When the caterpillar drives for the first time later on, the track will tighten up or even loosen a little. Depending on the situation, it may be necessary to insert or remove a chain link. The so-called revolving platforms are assembled in another production line. These include a driver's cab, engine, and electronics. At the end of the production lines, the workers assemble the turntable and the crawlers. In the technical jargon, The men usually try to push the parts into the correct position by hand. But that's more by force of habit. Because nothing here can be moved by hand alone. It's precision work with parts weighing tons. It takes 35 days before such a mega crane leaves the production line. Afterwards, the crane is painted. Most customers want yellow. To protect themselves from the toxic vapors, the painters wear respirators. They spray every single part yellow by hand. A wind farm is being built in East Friesland. For Karsten Heinz and Christian Henkert, this is the first time that they will be using the new 750-ton crane in the field. The two crane operators have to raise the nacelle and the three rotor blades for the wind turbine. Will this go smoothly at the first attempt? They do not know. They are being supported by Gunnar Stapel. He's driving the auxiliary crane. The first parts are now arriving at the construction site. Approximately 100 truckloads are necessary to bring all crane parts to the construction site. It's a logistical challenge. Almost two weeks pass before all the pieces are there. The little one helps the big one, just like in life. And everything that goes with it, pre-assembly, crane body, large equipment. Gunnar Stapel starts by laying out the parts in the field next to the wind farm. There is plenty of space on the site of the future wind farm, but setting up a crane is always a challenge. Everything has to be carefully organized. Nothing can go ahead without an exact plan. Yes, you have to make sure that you have enough space to set up the boom. If there are any trees, power lines, other wind turbines here, then you have to make sure that you have enough space behind the crane for the suspended ballast. After all, you've got over 400 tons standing in a relatively small area. The setup area has to be flat, has to be even. Yes, these are actually the most important things. And there's something else that's important to the crane operators, order. To make sure he can assign the parts to the correct crane at any time, Kosten Heinze marks them with numbers. In the meantime, Christian Henkert and Gunnar Stapel scratch the paint out of the openings for the fixing bolts with scrapers. 
I'll do the bottom and you do the top. Right now we've got time on our hands. The transporter's not here, so we can do something else. Important work. Reducing the workload so that the holes are all clean and the bolts can slide in easily afterwards. To lift heavy loads, every crane requires the appropriate counterweights. Although they look very compact, they weigh an incredible 12.5 tons each. A single truck can carry just two of these weights. Berlin Kreuzberg, right next to the Görlitz Park. Crane operator Eddie Kirkelich has to lift down a weather protection roof from a residential building with his 100-ton crane. The roof consists of several individual elements. Each element weighs about two and a half tons. First, the scaffolders undo the screw connections. Then they fasten four chains to the roof element. These are already attached to the crane hook. The crane operator below cannot see what is happening up on the roof. For him, it's down to trust. He receives the corresponding instructions from above via radio. Swing to the left, swing to the right, and go up and all that stuff. But these days, Eddie Kirkelich can almost operate his crane in his sleep. As in almost all cranes, there are two joysticks for this. You can do the work with two movements. Pressing downwards lowers the load, upwards raises it, and raising the boom and lowering the boom. And this one is for turning to the left, to the right, and to push out the telescope, in and out. During the lifting process, the men secure the roof element with a rope. In this way, they can keep it in position so it won't bump into anything. Although that is not easy between all these trees. Done. On the ground, the workers disassemble the roof elements. This takes over half an hour. For crane operator Eddie Kikulich, this always means a break. The men have already dismantled and loaded the first roof element. They're in a hurry, because time is money. Done. The crane is a Tadano mobile crane. The boom is up to 51 meters long when fully extended. In ideal conditions, it can lift up to 100 tons. However, the further away the load is from the vehicle, the less weight can be lifted. Otherwise, the crane would tip over. However, occasionally operators seem to forget the rules of physics, like here. There's no need to be afraid, but you need to show respect. This crane hasn't tipped over. It is still lying on the ground and is about to be erected. At the wind farm construction site in East Friesland, the team led by the two crane operators, Christian Henkert and Karsten Heinze, has already assembled the individual parts. Now they connect thick ropes to the boom. These will be used to raise the 196 meter long boom. The ropes are made of aramid. This plastic is extremely durable. The ropes are therefore five times more tear resistant than conventional steel ropes. They are considerably lighter than steel cables, but with the diameters used here, they have the same load-bearing capacity. For example, the forces they have to withstand, they're much easier to handle. Assembling a crane is always tough work, especially today. It's 30 degrees, the sun is burning down, and it's likely to be a very long day. It's really hard work today. There's no wind, it's humid, 30 degrees, and heavy equipment. 
But that's the way it is. You need to take more breaks, drink a lot. Last check before lifting. The crane operators inspect the boom again. They check whether everything is really tightly screwed and whether they've forgotten anything. For example, if a single tool were left on the boom, it could fall down when the crane is raised and cause serious injury to the crane operators. Gunnar Stapel brushes clumps of earth off the boom with a broom. They too could be dangerous for the men below. Sweeping the dust from underneath. The mug that's stuck underneath. When it's up there and then falls down, then you've got a hole in your head. The special thing about this crane, the men don't necessarily have to be in the cab. They can control it and even raise it by remote control. Because of the heat, today everything is taking much longer. It's slowly getting late. It is unclear whether the crane will be fully raised before nightfall. The team is tense. Some final arrangements. The men want to erect the brand new crawler crane now. It'll be the first time. Extreme concentration and delicate control. With just two joystick movements, Christian Henkert raises the heavy boom. Enormous forces are at work. The boom bends like a giant banana. It takes half an hour to reach its final position. The men are relieved. No accidents, no damage to the vehicle, no damage to other equipment. To be honest, it went perfectly. Just a bit late, but that's just the way it is. A few days later, the crane is ready to raise the first components. Among other things, the crane operators now install the final tower elements. Despite having this load on the hook, the heavy crawler crane can still move. Karsten Heinze tilts his cab. This way, he can see better what's happening up on the hook. After installing the tower elements, the workers want to install the nacelle of the wind turbine. The three rotor blades will be attached to this. Christian, raise the cable slowly. Using a man basket, the crane lifts the workers to a height of 135 meters. Later, these men will screw all the parts together. The ride to the top takes only about one minute. Christian, can you swing just a bit to the right? Time is pressing. The wind has been too strong in the last couple of days and bad weather is also predicted for the days to come. The team can't lose any time. Every day of downtime costs a lot of money. To lift the heavy nacelle and the rotor blades, the crane requires appropriate counterweights. Otherwise, it would simply fall over. Depending on the weight of the load, the men change the counterweight. We're hanging the pallet on the back so we've got more suspended ballast, and then the nacelle goes up. Christian Henkert attaches the additional ballast with bolts. This pallet now contains another 100 tons of steel weights. We've now adjusted the ballast so the crane can lift the load, and then it goes right up, quick as a flash. But despite the time pressure, the crane operators have to remain calm. Every action is well considered. It's almost like slow motion. The worst thing that could happen is that we're not in the middle. The part weighs 100 tons and slides to the side and damages the aluminium, because the housing is only aluminium. That would be the worst, actually, or someone gets squashed because they're not expecting it. The nacelle is hanging from the rope. Now it will become clear whether the 750-ton crane lives up to the manufacturer's promise. That went well now. Everything's working fine. The crane is doing very well. We've got 100 tons, and here we go. 
Centimeter by centimeter, the crane lifts the nacelle upwards. At a height of 135 meters, the workers mount it onto the tower. After that, the log is updated. We write down how much ballast we attached at the back, how far the pallet was extended to the rear, so we know everything for the next time. Now we've tried it out and carried out some secure calculations, but it has proved its worth and we will keep doing it that way, it's good. Work on the construction site in Berlin-Kreuzberg is also progressing well. Crane operator Eddie Kirkelich is lifting the weather protection roof off a 26-meter-high residential building. Down on the floor, all the individual elements are dismantled. Originally, two days were planned for this, but it's cold, and the men are moving at a tremendous pace. They want to get finished. Plus, every day of crane operation costs money. It looks like the workers will actually get finished today. But then comes the twist. Our site manager would like you to be here again tomorrow so that we can pick up all the horizontal lattice girders and so on. All right then, I'll call the company and let them know. I thought we were going to be done today. We are, more or less. But you heard that. The construction manager wants me to stay here. They want me to bring down some girders tomorrow. Well then. For today, however, the work is over. The weather roof has been brought down. Everything turns out great. And we'll carry on tomorrow, taking a few smaller parts down. We'll be done by noon. At the wind farm construction site in East Friesland, assembly of the rotor blades is now in full swing. Each one is about 59 meters long and weighs about 25 tons. However, there were some major problems with the wind. There have been considerable delays. In the early evening, crane operator Christian Henkert lifts the workers again to a height of 135 meters. And it's not until hours later, it's almost dark, that the team can lift the third rotor blade and mount it. Crane operators are perfectly trained specialists. Their most important characteristics, physical fitness, patience, and very good knowledge of physics. Without that, it all goes wrong. The job is tough, but varied, because every crane deployment is different, day in and day out.